Today we're going to focus on iron. It's a super important micronutrient and one that you definitely need to include in your soil testing program on your farm. All right, iron has a lot of different roles in the plant. One of the things it does is it helps with chlorophyll production. In addition to that, it helps with respiration, photosynthesis, even nitrogen fixation in legumes. So there are a lot of things that iron does overall, but you probably don't think much about iron because there is typically a lot of iron in most soils. In fact, we often see the subsoil having much more iron than the topsoil. So I would just really encourage you, make sure you're testing your soil, see what you've got for levels out there, and a lot of times what we're talking about is 20 to 40 parts per million on a Midwest Labs DTPA test. Also, you want to make sure your levels for iron are higher than your levels for manganese so you don't run into issues with not getting enough iron actually into and utilized by the plant. Well, this is one of the things, Brian, you, you can have iron in the soil, but is it in the right form to get into your plant? And when we're doing plant tissue analysis, this is one of the things that we're looking at. Are we getting enough iron uptake? But also as we walk soybean fields, especially early in the growing season in high pH soils, we see iron deficiency chlorosis as a problem in soybeans where many growers are trying to pick different soybean varieties to try to avoid the yellowing that they're seeing out in fields. Iron deficiency chlorosis looks like a yellow leaf with green veins. And if you're seeing that on soybean plants, chances are iron deficiency chlorosis could be the issue. But the problem here is in high pH soils, the iron form that's in the soil is in the ferric form instead of the ferrous form that the plants really want. So when you get into that high pH, iron chemically converts over into a different form of iron that's not available. So you do have the iron, you just have the wrong soil pH. Okay, so we talked about all that just within the last couple of weeks here on the show. But the big thing is we want to think about iron as this really important nutrient for plants. And we want you to consider even in your low pH soils where you don't have iron deficiency chlorosis, looking at what are my iron levels and do I need to add some iron to the soil? Everybody who has IDC knows that they've got that problem of the form is wrong, so they just need to get the pH down. Okay, problem solved. Or you can certainly use some chelated iron in furrow, and then that will at least give you the Band-Aid fix, and you'll have a better result this year. But here's another thing that I want you to think about. If you have low pH soil, are you liming? Okay, when you're liming, one of the first nutrients that can get tied up is iron when you overlime. So be careful about how much lime you're putting out. We suggest that you use lime in moderation. Use more of a long-term plan rather than saying, oh, I need 10 tons, I'm just gonna throw it all out in one shot. You can do that if you want to, but if you're not supplementing with some iron, it's very possible that all of a sudden, your plants could become deficient in iron. When it comes to iron, what you're probably thinking right now is, all right, if I have determined that I need some iron on my farm, how am I gonna get the iron? What forms are available? And when am I gonna apply it? there are a lot of different ways you can get iron. For example, you should look at all things that are gonna get applied to your farm, compost, manure. We use some water treatment lime. We get some free iron out of that. Uh, I, I would just take a look at all these different things because you never know what might contain some iron. And even though it might be small, that might be all the iron that your next crop is going to need. Now certainly you could buy some commercial fertilizer. We've used iron sulfate on our farm before. We've used some chelated iron, both in two by two and in furrow. We've also sprayed some foliar products that contain low rates of iron. So there are a lot of different sources for iron. We would just tell you, hey, if you're really, really short in the soil, you probably better get something on the soil that's gonna contain quite a few pounds. Otherwise, make sure you're banding so that iron definitely gets into your plant this year. One last point that I would make is when you're looking at your lawns, look at iron. We're seeing many different lawn fertilizers now adding some iron to the blend. And we're seeing darker, greener lawns in many cases. Why? Because as Brian mentioned before, iron's important in photosynthesis. And if we're short of iron in our lawns, we're not going to have the dark green grass that we're looking for. So anyway, just a little tip to keep in mind for around the house. Well, another tip we'll give you if you want top yields is to control our Weed of the Week. It's coming up next.